So you've been keeping geckos for quite some time. And now you find that you have an interest in breeding. But the question is, is exactly what am I going to breed? What projects am I going to do? Well, today let's dive right into this video and find out some of the projects that we might recommend that you try. So it's always difficult when you are trying to narrow down choices in such a humongous field of opportunities as far as breeding. When it when we're talking about crested geckos, there's so many different colors, so many different kinds, so many different morphs, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming for a lot of people, uh, and they don't they can't narrow it down so they just either a quit before they really get started and say it's really not for me or b they just start throwing together a lot of different stuff and nothing seems to be giving them exactly what they want now i, I we here at flawless are not far removed from that whole process and it took quite some time to kind of narrow down exactly what we wanted to do you, if you've been following us for a while, you know that Will loves his reds, I love my whites, and so we put them together so we have our high white reds. But we also dabble in a lot of, of other things. And a few um, areas that you guys might want to check out as we're going into the 2024, starting into planning for 2025, 2026, 2027 um, seasons some of the different areas or some of the different morphs genes that we would recommend you kind of maybe working with or getting interested in are some of the following. So the first one is cappuccino. Cappuccino is, it gets a bad rep. Okay, well, we're going to be straight out honest. It does get a bad rep due to the problems that the super form of the gene have have. Well, I guess you would say that that have come about with the uh, testing and with different people that have had supers they have come to well it's been decided that basically it's not really a good ethical way to continue to go into um, that particular gene or to continue to breed that particular gene for they're having issues with their nostrils and just failure to thrive so it does get a bad rep for that, but the cappuccino gene in and of itself in its single form is a very, it's, there's so many various things that you can do with it. One of the things that we noticed, because we do have cappuccinos here at Flawless, we never had any plans to put them together. We actually wanted to plug them into our lily whites um, and then our exanthics. So we took our male and bred him to, he has three female lilies. And then we took our female and she has been bred with our exanthic John Gotti. So this is actually her second season both of them their second season and we're just really excited to see the outcome of that project but that being said if you are interested in getting into cappuccinos we highly recommend going in in just different directions cappuccino our female cappuccino historia she is absolutely incredible she is an extreme tiger and her coloring is just out of this world a lot of cappuccinos you'll see are, are, you know, maybe a brown or a creamy brown um, color. She, however, um, is a mocha brown, like a really deep chocolatey brown that you would think of as like coffee bean. And she's also mixed with a bright orange. I mean, the orange, is just it just pops. It almost gives you the thought process of like the old school Halloween kind of color palette. So this particular these past two seasons we have bred her with John Gotti our exanthus because we are kind of going that route with her but in the future we may try to branch out with her so if you have any interest in maybe going into Halloweens or something like that that might be a cool little twist to your projects to involve cappuccino in also with cappuccino obviously we just said that we put our male with uh, three female lily whites and that's been his trio from his starting year which was two seasons ago um, but different the different lilies have different 
you know, traits to them. Like for instance, Tigris, she is an extreme tiger and her lily white falls over her tiger pattern, which creates a fragment um, through the actual lily white, just because the tiger pattern is so extreme and it almost looks like these little dots. So we paired her with our um, male fable, our cappuccino, and we have beautiful little frappuccino tiger lilies popping out all over the place that is something that we you know focused on with our cap rather than doing um the cap to cap so it's a single gene cap um obviously frappuccinos are single gene frapp um but it does have the layered stack um, it well cappuccino in and of itself where all genes really have the opportunity to be able to stack genes to see how different things interact with each other and lily white is one of those things that we knew that we would like to mix with a lot of different things um, but cappuccino just was very attractive to us so we did that she, he also has two other females we have a, a lily white named famous who she is more of a full coverage white lily white she's got a lot of white across her she's almost like fully white and then we have trifecta who is a tricolor lily white so we're going that route with him as well uh, and he is he's a funny uh, cappuccino because he is he almost if you didn't know better you would think he was like a hypoxanthic because he is a light gray color um, and he does have the tiger stripings as well so you might want to get into cappuccinos mix them with some different things go some different routes with them like i said with our projects we have them very we have them in a very specific way but hey guys flawless Chrissy geckos here will audra and we're here to tell you about our patreon yes going through tough times you got to know that flawless is always going to have your back if you go over to patreon.com slash flawless crested geckos you'll see all the perks and benefits it is there for you to come and support us on our patreon $50 a month turns around and goes right back into your Flawless Crested Gecko savings account for you to use towards your next purchase. Any purchase. We also give awesome benefits such as 5% off off the top of the, the price of the gecko. We get free merchandise, t-shirts, we have stainless steel tables, tools, yes. <laughs> all kinds of goodies. We also give free shipping to our members all year round, no blackout dates. And, you know, we give awesome tips, or we think we do anyway. <laughs> That's right. So go over to patreon.com slash flawless crested geckos. And, and join our family. Yes. There are so many other avenues that will go with their offspring and different things like that. So you don't have to, just because someone's doing something with cappuccino doesn't mean you have to. If you have something in mind, like if you wanted to mix it with a with you know like i said the halloweens we we haven't done that yet so that might be something you might be interested in doing so number two um different genes or different projects that you may want to look into if you're starting out breeding and don't know where to go is um charcoals charcoals are one of those things that i've been around for quite some time and we do have charcoals here at flawless but there are across the board charcoals are so varied in their degree of darkness um, some are that chocolatey brownie brown and then some are super dark black almost making you think of an exanthic um, exanthics are obviously a great choice to kind of jump into they are you know the prices have come down so they're a lot more affordable now they're still holding their prices pretty well but they have come down so a lot of people can kind of enjoy that morph uh, now versus several years ago when it was obviously a very new gene um, but the charcoal is also an alternative to dealing with the exanthics that you could kind of go into now there are some different various price ranges as far as it pertains to charcoals some of your really dark grade a charcoals are going to be more expensive but they are absolutely beautiful they almost have like a velvet look to them and you can mix charcoal with just about anything and uh, see what the outcome would be we haven't done charcoals with high whites yet so that might be an interesting combination to see how deeply contrasted you could get your high whites and your sidewalls that didn't carry forward with the charcoal um, so that would be really cool to see what that would um, what that outcome would be like third number three um, in projects that you might be interested in um, is yellows uh, yellows are something that across the board you know people either love them or they don't um, and 
we here at Flawless actually have quite a few yellows that we just absolutely adore. Um, we are more inclined to look at the high white uh, yellow where there are two stark colors, two stark combinations or of the combination of the two. So you can really see the contrast between the paper white and that bright, bright yellow. Um, lily whites are always fun to work in with yellows. They're always um, a, a beautiful combination, but when you really have a true high white that does not have the lily and you mix it with a yellow, it's just absolutely beautiful. You'll get different sidewall patterns and things like that. Um, so mix in like say the white spot trait with um, a yellow, a beautiful yellow base. like that's where it's at. I would love to, for somebody to play with a yellow um, that's maybe a yellow phantom or something like that because the majority of uh, the phantoms that I've seen people uh, really put out are you know more yellow based or excuse me more red based um, things like that but I'd love to see a bright yellow phantom. I have not seen that yet so if y'all have any pictures of any of something like that that would be really awesome to mix a white spot and a yellow yellow phantom in. Um, I'd love to see. There's a, I think it's Games Geckos. They have a gecko that has this gorgeous white spot to it. it almost look like bubbles on the side of it. So white and red, the mixture of the white and red. I'd love to see the mixture of that in a yellow form. So yellows are something that I think we are probably going to uh, you know, hone in on and concentrate in on, but that would be a project we would love to see somebody get really involved in. Shout out to Noah at Oklahoma Zoological. Um, he and Meredith, I think Meredith is not as keen on yellows, but he loves yellows and he has a really great eye for it. Um, and he's got some beautiful, beautiful animals. So uh, if you're looking for a high end, um, high yellow type of, of situation like a sire or a dam that you're looking for for a project, maybe check Noah out. Um, or you can check out and see what we have right now. Like I said, we're going to focus in on that a little bit more and see what we can do with it. So I'd love to see you guys get into projects like that. Um, but those are just like three random uh, project ideas. There are so many different ideas out there. We have um, our Patreon. Uh, you guys know we, we talk about Patreon a lot. And I don't think a lot of people understand the real benefit of Patreon. And um, one of those benefits, obviously, is that you get your all your subscription fee to be able to purchase whatever gecko you see um, anytime we have website releases and things like that. Um, or you know to me one of the bigger even bigger benefits than than that is the networking ability and to be able to see all of our patreon members communicating with each other on our discord our private discord um channel and just to have them talking amongst each other and talking about projects and communicating in such a positive way that's that's just a beautiful thing to watch and to you know Will and I, we jump in randomly with Discord, but we see it all and we see you guys out there, you could Patreon members who are active in the Discord and who are helping each other back and forth and who have formed a family or a friendship. We call it the Flawless Fam, but it really is the Flawless Fam. Um, these guys are coming together and networking and being able to bounce ideas off of each other for different future projects. It's like we've got some with with Dalmatians that they just love ink spots. We've got some who are going the Exanthic route. We've got some that love the Frappuccinos and um, we've got some that are absolutely interested in tricolors and high whites with high white walls. We have Harlequin based uh, programs. Um, we have one that loves Halloweens. So in my mindset, I thought of him when I started talking about Halloweens earlier. Um, so it's just, there's so many different avenues that you could go in to, but those are three projects that um, you know I think we we added cappuccino in there because it gets such a bad rep and it doesn't have to be bad it doesn't have to be negative you can work with jeans that may not be great in one form but they're excellent in other forms so just keep that in mind when you're dealing with certain jeans and and projects that you know you don't have to shy away from jeans because you're afraid of what it may do if you're using it in your projects appropriately. So um, again, like I say, 
going back to got kind of off on the tangent there but going back to the patreon aspect of it all um just being able to see different ideas and and what what people are actually interested in and there's just so many various things but those are the three that we wanted to mention today and maybe if you like this type of video where we're discussing different projects let us know uh put it down in the comments and and uh maybe we can do some more different um spotlights on some different projects that you may not have thought about i hope you guys have a wonderful day and this is audra with flawless crusty geckos and i am out bye